NASA's stranded astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, are finally preparing to return home after an unexpectedly long stay in space. Their return would be a satisfying response to the recent controversy surrounding Elon Musk's claims that their stranding in space was not just logistical, but also politically motivated. So what do they really think about this statement? And is there more to this story than meets the eye? Let's dive in today's Tech Map episode. Anyway, our next goal is 100,000, and we need your support to get there. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. We appreciate your help. Thank you. After spending an unexpected nine months aboard the International Space Station, ISS, NASA's astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams are more eager than ever to return to Earth. Originally, the duo was set to stay on the ISS for just eight days as part of Boeing's Starliner test flight in June. However, due to safety concerns with the spacecraft, NASA extended their mission significantly while working on a return plan. Now, Wilmore and Williams are preparing to return aboard a SpaceX Crew Dragon in March as part of the Crew-9 mission, alongside fellow astronaut Nick Haig. Their return, however, depends on the arrival of Crew-10, as per standard ISS procedures. Each departing crew hands over operations to the incoming team before heading home. Any delays with Crew-10 will push back Crew-9's return as well. Initially, NASA planned to launch Crew-10 in February, allowing Crew-9 to come back in early to mid-March. Crew-10 was also set to debut SpaceX's fifth and final Crew Dragon spacecraft, designated C-213. However, delays in the new capsule's delivery forced NASA to adjust the timeline. In December, NASA announced that the new Crew Dragon wouldn't arrive in Florida until early January 2025 pushing Crew-10's launch to late March. Then, on February 11th, the agency confirmed a major shift. Instead of waiting for C-213, SpaceX would use the Dragon Endurance spacecraft for Crew-10. Dragon Endurance was originally intended for Axiom Space's AX-4 mission, but NASA decided to reassign it, giving SpaceX more time to finish the new spacecraft while still keeping Crew-10 and Crew-9's missions on track. Crew-10 is now scheduled to launch on Wednesday, March 12th at 7.48 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida, with docking set for 10 a.m. on March 13th. Crew-9's return will follow a several-day handover period though the exact undocking date will depend on weather conditions off Florida's coast. Notably, this will be the final Dragon splashdown in Florida, before recovery operations shift to the West Coast. With March 12th fast approaching, preparations for Crew-10 are in full swing. On March 5th, Dragon Endurance arrived at the hangar at Pad 39A, setting the stage for next week's highly anticipated launch. The SpaceX Dragon spacecraft will carry NASA astronauts Anne McLean, commander, and Nickel Ayers, pilot, along with mission specialists JAXA, Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, astronaut Takuya Onishi, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Kirill Peskov to the orbiting laboratory for a science mission of about four months. This is the 10th crew rotation mission and the 11th human spaceflight mission for NASA to the space station, supported by the Dragon spacecraft since 2020 as part of the agency's commercial crew program. This mission is crucial because it focuses on preparing astronauts for the long hauls they'll face on future missions, like those to Mars. One of the key areas of research is exercise and medical studies. For instance, the Zero-T2 study is looking at how astronauts can stay fit without using treadmills, which are bulky and might not be practical on Mars missions. This study will help figure out how to maintain strength, bone health, and balance using alternative methods. Another important study is the CIPHER project, which is a comprehensive investigation into how the human body adapts to long-duration spaceflight. It's tracking changes in the eyes, bones, heart, 
muscles, and immune system to get a clearer picture of how space affects the entire body. Additionally, there's the Spaceflight Standard Measures, an omics archive, which collects data on how the body and mind adapt to space, along with molecular-level analysis of the body's reactions. Astronauts are also testing treatments for brain changes and eye swelling that some experience in space, using B vitamin supplements and thigh cuffs. Lastly, they're documenting landing-related injuries to improve spacecraft design. These studies started a year before the mission and will continue for two years after the astronauts return, providing invaluable insights into keeping astronauts healthy and fit on long voyages where space and resources are limited. This mission is a significant step forward in understanding what it takes to explore deep space safely and effectively. Meanwhile, aboard the International Space Station, the stranded NASA crew addressed the swirling controversy over Elon Musk's claims that their extended stay was politically motivated. Things stems from an interview with Fox News' Sean Hannity, where SpaceX CEO Elon Musk and former President Donald Trump discussed their commitment to rescue the two abandoned astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams. Musk insisted that the duo was left in space for political reasons, a statement that quickly sparked backlash including a public disagreement with European astronaut Andreas Mogensen. Responding to the controversy, Wilmore acknowledged Musk's claim, but admitted he lacked the full picture. Uh, I can only say that Mr. Musk, what he says is absolutely factual. I have no, we have no information on that, though, whatsoever. What was offered, what was, what was not offered, who it was offered to, how that process has went, that's information that we simply don't have. So I, I believe him. Uh, I don't know all those details, and I don't think any of us really can give you a, the answer that maybe that you would be hoping for. At the same time, he distanced himself from the political debate, downplaying Musk and Trump's efforts to frame their prolonged stay as a political issue. The words they've said, politics, I mean, that's part of life. We understand that. From my standpoint, politics has not played into this at all. Wilmore also expressed gratitude and respect for both Musk and Trump, stating, We have, all of us have the utmost respect for Mr. Musk, and obviously respect and admiration for our president of the United States, uh, Donald Trump. We appreciate them. We appreciate all that they do for us, for human spaceflight, for our nation. Elon Musk previously has repeatedly clarified his controversial statements through posts on X. For example, in response to criticism from astronaut Dennis Andreas Mogensen, Musk wrote in an aggressive tone, You are fully retarded. SpaceX could have brought them back several months ago. I offered this directly to the Biden administration, and they refused. Return was pushed back for political reasons. Idiot. Or in the latest post, he continued, the astronauts were only supposed to be up there for eight days and now have been there for eight months. SpaceX could have sent up another dragon and brought them home six months ago, but the Biden White House, not NASA, refused to allow it. President Trump asked to bring them back as soon as possible, and we are doing so. To make his argument clear, Elon Musk, in an interview conducted by Rob Schmidt at the Conservative Political Action Conference, 2025 in Washington, D.C., added. The, no, I mean, the, the Biden administration was, was attacking me next level. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the Department of Justice or Injustice under the Biden administration was, yeah. I mean, they, they were suing SpaceX. They were, they were suing SpaceX for not hiring asylum seekers. Uh, and we're like, but it's actually illegal for us to hire asylum seekers because we're, uh, rocket technology is covered under uh, ITAR rules, which is, means it's an advanced weapons technology, yeah. and so we can only hire permanent residents or, green, or, or, or citizens. Right. Like, so, so we're damned if we do, damned if we don't. We said, like, so how, how can they sue us for not hiring asylum seekers when it's actually illegal for us to do so? Yeah. But nonetheless, there was a big Department of Justice or Injustice case about this against SpaceX. So obviously it was an antagonistic situation. Um, and the, those astronauts were supposed to be up there for eight days, and now they're up there for eight months. Does that make any sense? And, and, and we, we, we obviously could have brought them back sooner, but they didn't want, it to, didn't want anyone who supported President Trump to look good, basically. Yeah.
That's the, that's the, that's the issue. Musk's claim has faced pushback from some politicians, including former NASA Deputy Administrator Pam Melroy, who served under President Biden. Melroy disputed Musk's assertion, stating that top NASA officials were never presented with such an offer. An offer to bring the crew home early. It never came to headquarters, she said. She stressed that if Musk had discussed the offer with someone, it wasn't with anyone in NASA's leadership. I don't know who he spoke to, she added. It wasn't Bill, it wasn't me. It wasn't our senior leadership at headquarters. Melroy also pointed out that the Biden administration largely stayed out of NASA's operational decisions. The White House was very good about letting us make safety decisions and leaving that to the experts at NASA, she said. Reinforcing NASA's commitment to safety, Melroy emphasized that risk assessment was the driving force behind the agency's decision. It's important to know that the decision was made based on what the safest option was, she said explaining that bringing the crew home on an already scheduled rotation mission was the least risky choice for NASA managers. She reiterated that NASA leadership was never informed of any offer from Musk to launch an additional SpaceX mission or to bring the Crew-9 capsule home earlier than planned. Besides the opposing opinions, many people have expressed their agreement with SpaceX's CEO. An ex-user, Ken Kirtland 4 who frequently shares updates and in-depth insights on space news, commented, Just to make this clear, the Musk lie about the astronauts isn't SpaceX offered a mission. The lie is that NASA and the NASA and even Biden, LMOO, didn't want SpaceX to bring the astronauts home because he no likey Elon. Even though that's exactly what NASA did during Biden, which off-rip tells you how absurd this dumbass lie is, Dr. Phil Metzger suggested that NASA's decision to decline Elon Musk's offer to return the stranded astronauts earlier was primarily due to budget constraints. I think there's some nuance here. If you ask NASA, I think they'll say they declined Elon's offer to bring back the crew earlier because the $250 million cost of an additional Dragon crewed flight is outside their budget, requiring a new funds appropriated by Congress but also the political optics of NASA's decisions are, of course, always at the forefront. NASA has to keep a coalition of satisfied members of Congress. An overt embarrassment to Boeing would have political pushback, and members of Congress would tell NASA they can't have new funds, so get it done with the existing appropriation, which is exactly what they are doing. So yes, Elon is correct that it was a political decision to turn down his offer, but almost everything in life is political, so it isn't that unusual. And really, I doubt NASA could have made any other choice at the time. Musk quickly fired back, dismissing the budget argument entirely. Price was never even discussed. They flatly refused. We would have made it work within the annual budget. The real issue is that they did not want positive press for someone who supported Trump. That's it. End of story.